Welcome to the OC, bitch. <laughs> what you say? I told you that it's time to start the show. That you only meant well. Yeah, the show's well, gonna do well. You did. What you say? I said, let's go. That it's all for the best. Yeah, it's probably gonna be like the best podcast. What you say? God, do I have to keep repeating that myself? Just what we need, but you decided this. Hold up, I what thought we both say? decided to do this. What did she say? So let's start the show. Hey, everyone. Welcome to mm, What You Say, an OC podcast. My name's Elise Daly. And I'm Scott Daly. And together, we're, we're the, the Dailies. Dailies. Welcome to episode two of our new podca- podcast. 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 Riding the waves of the hit 2000s teen drama, Ooh. The OC. Yep. This week on the show, we are covering season two Oh, season one, season episode one, two. Get episode it right, two. Scott. It's get it right. Get it tight. Mess. Season two, one, episode two. Gosh, again. You're just making me nervous. Okay, babe. Scott, we're going to cover season one, episode two, entitled The Model Home. Oh, you're just going to let you do this from now on. You're killing it. But before we get into this episode, it's time for everyone's favorite section of our series episodes. What is it? It's the Rosies and Thorny show. Are you going to insert the song again? Of course. Okay, here we go. Every rose has its thorn. Has its thorn. Just like every night has its dawn. Dawn, dawn, dawn. Every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. Every rose has its thorn. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. All right, Elise, this is the part of the podcast where you and I look back on the last week and talk about the good and the bad, the the roses and the thorns. The highs, the lows, mountains and valleys. As always, we start with the bad because yes. it's just better to do it that way. Elise, Get it out of the way. What is your thorn? So last week I was not on my campus for three days because I had training and Uh the second day um so my training started later which was great but one thing that was bad about it was that the place that I was going to training was right next to a high school Uh and I never have a school zone whenever I go to trainings because it's just it doesn't ever go right up next to a school but you drive by a school zone every day to get to your school so you should be well but i always versed. beat the school zone school zone is never during the time that i'm ever on the road i always am there before but anyways so i'm like driving it's a it's an area that i wasn't a hundred percent sure where i was going so i was still kind of using my navigation but i got to the road where my building was off of and i get to the st- uh, red light and so I'm like slowing down because it's a red light obviously and that's what you do obviously but evidently the turn lane portion of the road is what started the school zone and I was going over 20 under 40 because I was slowing down so I wasn't going the speed limit but evidently I wasn't going 20 miles an hour so as soon as that red light turned to green and I started to go through the intersection a cop decided to pull me over pulled me over me I I was sitting here wondering I was like why is she telling why is she making the story so complicated you got you got pulled over and that's I got all you pulled had to over. Say. But I was like, why is she why is she telling this in such a complicated manner? And I Because realized, I shouldn't have gotten pulled over. Yeah, I realized you were trying to make a case for why it is okay to speed in a school zone. It's not that it's okay to speed in a school zone, but guy, like, regardless of whether I was speeding or not, I was coming to a red light, so I was slowing down. So the school zone doesn't start until the line is like school zone starts here. So excuse me for crossing over the line and not slowing down prior to getting into the school zone. It was just, it was a mess. You were going over 20 miles an hour, over 20, under 40, That is against slowing down. And I came to a complete stop at the stoplight. (laughs) I don't understand the guy. He honked. He honked at me. 
Because I didn't know he was behind me because who could, who's pulled over in that case? He gave you, he didn't even give you a ticket. You're doing all this I didn't whining, have to show my insurance he didn't because he didn't ticket. really even care to pull me warning. over. He just needed to pull somebody over and call it in to get a quote. You are the least appreciative person ever. He could have written you a ticket and it would have been a school zone ticket. Those are really expensive. You got lucky. You deserve to get a ticket. And you're being unappreciated. Excuse me? I deserve to get a ticket? You were speeding in a school zone. It was a red light. I don't. It doesn't matter. It does. It These things matter, If you were Scott. going over 20 in a speed zone, you were breaking the law. It matters, Scott. It matters. But what's your thorn, Scott? Because I'm tired of talking about this. My thorn is people are mean to me. Yeah. People are mean to me. And that's not why I'm you. mean to you, Scott. I try you. and toughen you tough. up. Yeah. No, I mean. It's I, tough like, love. I don't want to get too much into it because I don't want, like... I don't want. I don't you want, don't want the, people don't to want, build you up, Scott. No, well, yeah, I don't want. I don't want attention like that. I don't want the person to know I was talking about them, and there's no chance of that because there's no way they're listening to this show, let alone any of my other shows. But there's. But this, this is the best one. There's just this guy out there that's just been like a jerk to me on the internet, like since we started. <sighs> Trolls. This, since we started Doof Media, and I, I don't know, like he just said some pretty hurtful stuff this past week, and like. You know, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing about people that are mean to you on the Internet. Um, as everyone listening to this might know, if you spend any amount of time on the Internet, even when they're being trolly and hurtful and mean, it still kind of gets to you. It does hurt. Like, still. I think I think like I've talked about this before, but there's like a there's like a little voice in the back of your head that's talking to you about how you're not actually that good. You're actually really bad at this and you're just getting lucky and everyone's going to figure out any moment they're going to figure out and they're going to realize you suck and they're going to all leave. Um, and when someone external to your brain echoes things that a voice in your brain tells you internally, it's like, well, there you go. Point proven. You were right. Internal voice of the brain. And the internal voice of the brain goes, Oh, I was, wasn't I? Well, let me just get louder then. Um, and that's kind of what I was just dealing with for the past two days. It just bummer. Like it put me like I got I, yesterday in particular, I got in like a really serious like funk. hour long funk of just like serious imposter syndrome. Right. Like and, and I think everyone that makes stuff gets that at some point. I mean, not even people that make stuff. Anyone that does something that puts something into the world gets this feeling like they don't deserve what they have. They they're they're just pretending um and so it <laughs> bless me i'm so def sorry definitely picked up by the mic i tried to turn um, away but yeah so that's i just that was a bummer it's just like it's like you know it's frustrating i'm gonna i'm gonna go off on a, a little bit of uh -oh. what's frustrating okay. with this is there's a deal between like constructive criticism that's an actual critique that's beneficial and is going to help improve something. Whereas someone is just being negative and hurtful and just wants to pick things apart because they don't like it. And I think that's when people do that, that's a little much. And that's, yeah, that's what's wrong with the world well, on the other segment every week of <laughs> what's wrong with the world, at least diagnoses it. And the I mean, world becomes a little better place. And look, the, the thing I've always done and I've always tried to do with any of my shows is put out that this is my opinion. I'm reading a thing. I'm interpreting it. Wait, Scott, it's just your opinion? Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, it's not fact? No. So just because you say it doesn't mean that it's true. Yeah. And that it's the only thing that can be that Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Are you sure? I am 100% Because you're saying sure. it. Yeah. So, okay. It's yeah. okay that people are disagree with yeah, you. Yeah, it's and I welcome it. And and you know what the thing, you know what the weird thing is like what? with some of this stuff, I don't I'm not even that attached to my opinion. Like if someone presents me with a compelling argument for a read that is different than mine, I would just opinion. be like I would just be like, "Huh. Oh. Yeah. That's a good point. And that's what you like about the whole literary analysis and I discussion know. portion of it. Thank Way to you. go, Scott. That's what I, so anyway, anyway, that's enough of the rant. I don't want to do that. I don't want to give this person any more time and attention than they need. We're not. Uh, it just it just put me in a funk. Yes. And that's my thorn for the yes. week. So on to the good parts. Yes. Elise, what's good? I'm one book away from my goal for my my uh, reading challenge. I almost said my what? summer reading challenge. So your good, your good my, reads my reading good challenge. My good reads reading challenge. What I am it? one book away. So it's a really low number and... It's not like I'm embarrassed that it's this low, well, then but it's why like are you cl clarifying it so much. Just at say the what same the time, 
it's really hard for me to get to read for pleasure and I'm trying to make it more of a priority. But my goal is to read 25 books this year. That's a lot of books, babe. You know, most people don't even read one. No. If we're being honest here. I think like here. the average amount of books read by Amer- Americans An adult, yeah. is like less than one. Yeah. So yeah. 25 it's, is like it's pretty good. Is like more than 25 times that amount. Yeah. So, so I'm at 24 right now. I, I just finished a book yesterday that I actually really liked. I don't think that's anything, Came out anything in June. to be ashamed about. Mm-hmm. Um, I read books as part of my job. And yeah, you read a lot more than I do. So I don't have that much more. Like, it's not like I have like eight times the amount of books read than you do. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like I want to zone out at home and not use any sort of brain power, which is maybe why I like reality TV so much is because uh-huh. it's like just complete uh-huh. trash. But I love it. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I mean, I've only read 37 this year so far and i'm way behind on my goal so yeah like, you're not like you're doing great thanks and i'll probably exceed it you know i'm not yeah. gonna just stop there yeah absolutely and then you gotta raise it more gotta raise that roof yeah, yeah. gotta raise it but scott so that was what's good for me what was good for you this week uh what was good for me this week is we returned to the movie theater oh the theater yeah um, the theater what happened to the theater. <laughs> I especially when movies are concerned. Our lives are very busy. Um, we do multiple shows every week. I got a lot of stuff going on. We yes. both have day jobs. Um, and just like the last last month or so. Hold up. Huh? We got day jobs. We got the day jobs. We do jobs in the day. Shocking for the listeners to learn that this right here, not our job. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just um, gotta see. You're in a mood tonight. <laughs> I'm in no mood. Were, I'm in my mood. You were definitely in a mood. No. Um, no moody. Yeah, the point is that the last time I went to the movie theater was when we saw... Um, Can't even recall. Once Upon a Pokemon? Time in Hollywood. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Which, I mean, like, I think for most people would be like, that's not that long ago. But we go to the movie we theater go like almost once weekly. a week. Yeah. Sometimes multiple times a week. And we people know us. we been in a while. Um, so, yeah, we got to go to the movie theater this past weekend. We saw Good Boys... Um, the new Seth Rogen, yeah, Adam Greenberg comedy. It was okay. It was, it was funny. It was okay. But the uh, more I think about it, the more I don't like it. The but, m- but you know what? Um, I enjoy the theater in general. Even if I don't like the movie, the experience of going to the theater and seeing a movie is a wonderful experience, and I'm so happy I got to do it again. And we're moving into the fall now. There's going to be lots of movies uh, coming yeah. out, and I'm very excited about Disney it. Disney Plus movie. movies. Yeah, well, that, that too. Those are still movies. Yeah. Yep. All right. So that is all the roses and thorns for okay, Scott. this week. I gotta Let's crack. Move. I gotta crack my knuckles. Let's move right on. Stretch in my neck to the main event. We're getting to the show, guys. The main show. All it's right. the event, all right. Scott. Can we just do it? Can we? Are you ready? I really need to stretch my neck. Hang on. <laughs> All right, we are here to talk I'm about good. episode 102, 1. The Model Home. 02. The Model Home, as we said, is the second episode of The OC. It was written by Josh Schwartz and Alan Heinberg and directed once again uh. by Doug Lyman. It premiered on August 12th, 2003. Okay, Scott. Do so you want to read the summary? Yes, I was just going to make it a seamless thing, and then you were like, do you want to read it? And I was like, no, I'm just going to jump in with it. Right, just well, jump in know. with the now summary. So Marissa and Seth convince Ryan not to leave Newport and hide him in one of Kirsten's vacant model homes. When Luke confronts Ryan about his relationship with Marissa, their fights end up setting the model home on fire, <gasps> getting them both arrested. <laughs> did you really need the <gasps> in there? Scott. Yeah, yeah. Who I am did. I kidding? You did. Yes. You did. All right, Elise, episode two. Yeah. What'd you think? Overall, you know, overall thoughts. You know, it's a good episode. It develops some characters in here. It really lets you know some dynamic, some dynamics between some very important relationships that are going to develop further. Um, I love me some Seth. Every episode, I love me some <laughs> Seth more and more. Yeah. Every time I watch this over and over, it's like Seth. Seth and I would be friends. You know, we're going to talk about this through the beat by beat, but I love Seth too. And I was really mm-hmm. disappointed by Ryan in this episode. I thought he uh, was pretty boring through a lot yeah, of this episode. Well, this, this episode, as much as it was about Ryan, it wasn't about Ryan. I mean, you could say that for the show. Yeah. As much as the true. show is about Ryan, it's not really it's about, not about Ryan. It's not about Ryan. That's true. So this episode opens Scott with Seth and Ryan lounging on their swimming pool and they're just floating, you know, Chilling. Sandy's grilling some burgers. <gasps> but something's different, Scott. What is different, Elise? Well, the pool. The pool is different. The pool is different. <laughs> the outside is different. 
Seth's room is different. Everything's different. Everything's different. Scott, why is it all different? Because, Elise, a little factoid for you. Oh, yes. The pilot episode of the show was filmed on location, which oh. in film parlance means they were really at a real house. They were filming in real rooms. They oh, were cool. filming in a real pool. That's neat. In a real pool house. And then in this, the first episode outside the pilot, they moved into their permanent location, which for most television shows is... Uh, a soundstage where they built sets. So this was filmed on sets and they tried to get the sets as close as possible to the location. they. But we on. could tell Scott, but yeah, going, we could tell going week to week on this. It's super obvious. Like, you know what else, Scott, at least the entire uh, geography of the kitchen is completely it, different. Is it? It's totally different. Um, something else. That's, I guess it's not different. What? Well, I guess it is different if it was a real house and then it's all the soundstage, the pool, Scott, the pool is different. Do you know how deep the pool actually goes to? No. Three feet. Of course it does. I mean, here's the thing. is <laughs> They're always on their knees. It's like, it's also pretty clear that they're inside. Like, uh, the one big thing in the change from this episode to me is that they're both these episodes are directed by Doug Lyman, but the second episode looks much more like a TV show, where the first episode... Well, it is a TV show. Yeah, I know. But the first episode, like, there was... We talked about the lighting changes. We talked about some of the camera stuff. This is much more... It's you bright. Know, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of flat. Like, it's just, like, yeah. it's colorless. It's it's TV. Like, it's 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 what TV looks like, especially in the 2000s. Yes. So. so, Scott, the name of this episode was The Model Home. So mm -hmm. we open up. They're, you know, lounging around. They're making lunch. They go inside. And, oh, my gosh, Kirsten's on the phone. And... You know what? We hear what? Kirsten talking to her dad. Uh -huh. And her dad is unhappy because she's looking at this model home and there's something wrong, Scott. The model home is not getting built. The and you know what we learn? Gone. We know we learn through this, Scott. What? It's not a dollhouse. <laughs> It's a model home. I like And that is why, Scott, it's not just a dollhouse she's playing with. We learn the episode name model home and we learn we learn what kiki does scott you're we being, learn what she does in this episode you're being so dramatic for such an unimportant part of the episode scott she is an architect she is a breadwinner she says i build these and then she clarifies not the models the actual the real models. ones yes scott she builds big houses mm -hmm. but not really well because it's not actually built. The contractors. The contractors are gone. left. But, I mean, so we see once again here in this moment that Sandy and Kirsten are arguing again over the fate of Ryan. Um, basically, he's just staying with them until tomorrow when social services will open up and the Ryan's going to go into the system. Because in the think, group home? I think we see here, you know, one of the things that's funny to see adjustments from the pilot, mm -hmm. where I think they, they felt Kirsten was, like, too antagonistic. Because throughout this entire episode, you have her um, every time someone says something about Ryan, the camera like tilts to her and you see this look of regret on her yes, face. Guilt. Yeah, because th she says this thing like, what kind of mother just abandons her child? Talking about Ryan's mom. Well, you abandoned him. Yeah, Kirsten. Um <sighs> But but Seth comes in and he's pissed because he's like, we have a pool house. This doesn't make any sense. Why can't he just stay here? And dun 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 It's the opening credits. Ah, yes. Okay, you can continue now. For the first time, the opening credits. Yes. We've never seen them before. Yes. Interestingly enough, you want to know what happens that's funny in the opening credits? Please do tell what happens. In this episode in particular, the opening credits end on a shot of the backyard, Ryan standing by the pool house looking out, a shot from the pilot. And then they immediately cut from that shot of the pool house in the pilot to the to a an out exterior shot of the pool house in this episode. Oh, see, this is why I married you, Scott. I would but never not, have it's noticed not the same pool. House. Never would have noticed. And just the fact that it fades right from one into the other makes mm. it really obvious mm. that it's not the same pool house. I think it's mm. really funny. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Never saw so it. That's my opening credits trivia. Uh, yes. What happens now, Elise? Um, so, you know what? Ryan decides he's not going to, he's not going to go to that group home, Scott. No, he's going to run away. Because 16-year-olds do not get put into foster care. No, they don't. That's not what Nobody he's about. Nobody wants a teenager. No. There's no way he's going to end up getting adopted. So he says, I'm going to take this bull with my own hands, and I'm going to take this bull to Texas. Are you saying he's grabbing the bull by the horns? Is that what you're... Yeah. Yeah. 
But anyways, so he decides to run away. And Seth is like, hey, yeah, I want to run away. Let's go to Tahiti. Wait, no, we're not going to go to Tahiti now, but I'll still help you run away. And Ryan's like, no, you can't run away with me. You have your family here. And Seth's like, okay, I won't run away with you, but I'll help hide you. And Ryan's like, yeah, okay. And then they go and Ryan walks down and then Seth comes out like Mission Impossible with a skateboard. You c- <laughs> yeah, Seth agrees to help Sorry. hide him. And then there's this whole scene where he hides in his bedroom, fully clothed under his... Oh yeah, I forgot about that part. Which is like the oldest gag in TV history, right? Yeah. Like the hide under your bed, fully clothed, so you can... Yeah, but so... Oh, wi- Sandy. So while they're... Um, Ryan is waiting for Seth to come down, and who shows up? Ah, uh, the same scene, the same setup. Except it's a where different... they first met. I mean, it is a different exterior, so it's not the same <laughs> thing, but it's the same type of thing. They're both at the driveways. Marissa's waiting, and then there's Ryan. Well, I guess she's not really waiting because she's, she's about to get in her car. Her car. Yeah. yeah, she's gonna get into her car because she's gonna go to Summer's birthday. And at that point, they're like talking, and then Seth comes down with his little skateboard and his, his black, his black turtleneck. turtleneck zip up sweater, all the way zipped up. And he says, "I was going for stealth, and also it's slimming, which is <laughs> just, just the perfect zip code." <sighs> it is, yeah. Uh, Elise, I, yes. I have something to ask you though. Yes, it's a very important question, Elise. Uh, what is it, Scott? Is Seth creepy? Um, okay, so let's let's dive into the question of is Seth creepy in this episode? Because is Marissa so Marissa's going to her best friend Summer's birthday party and so she's like to Ryan and Seth, Oh, we're going to celebrate Summer's birthday. It's her birthday party. And Seth goes, Wait, it's not Summer's birthday. Summer's birthday is not until Wednesday. Yes, Scott, this is creepy. Well here This I is mean, creepy in the sense that he's saying it in a way where he's upset. He's like, wait, you can't be celebrating her birthday. Her birthday's not until Wednesday, right? It's your birthday now. Like, that's weird. That's creepy. Now, if it was just someone else and it was like, oh, you're celebrating your birthday? I thought her birthday wasn't until Wednesday. Like, that's a different thing. It's not as creepy. Now, I think it's creepy that he knows when her birthday is. Okay, but the deal is, is like at school, they always announce birthdays. Yeah, but to, like, here's the deal. Like, I was thinking about this. Okay. I was thinking about this. It's a very important question. I was thinking back to my life all the women i've had crushes on throughout my years yeah and i was thinking which of them i definitely knew their birthday while i had crushes on them and the only ones i could successfully identify as yes i knew their birthday were people that were in my friend group already like they were girls in my group of friends and therefore i knew their birthday and i had Mm. a crush on them to he is not friends with her at all he's not friends with her at all he has no no relationship with her whatsoever of any okay. kind. And he has her birthday memorized. While I understand that, I'm also going to go to bat in his corner, you know, stand behind him for a bit because if, if it was a small school and it's like these private schools where they've gone to school together for years and years, he's going to end up knowing when her birthday is. Yeah, but there's a difference it is a summer birthday. There's a difference between knowing the birthday and memorizing the birthday to the point where the second you hear about a birthday party, you I say, I mean, regardless, oh, Scott, it. yes, this is creepy. It's creepy. This is it's creepy. creepy. I, creepy. I give you that. Seth, buddy, you being, you you're need being a to calm monster. down yeah. just a bit. All right. Here's a question I have for you. Yes. This whole scene. Please do ask. What, what time is it supposed to be? Um, you know, the sun sets in the summer <laughs> around like what time? Nine? Eight thirty, nine. Well here it has to be like at least ten, ten thirty, so right? Let's lay out the situation. Okay. Ryan, Why are we worried about the bedtime? Because I think it's ridiculous. Ryan yeah. goes to the pool house yes. and we see a scene of him in bed, tossing and turning as if he can't get to sleep. Yes. And then eventually he gives up, gets up, and decides he's gonna sneak out of the house. He packs up all his stuff, he got decides to sneak out of the house. Okay. As he's doing that, Seth sees him because Seth is going to his pool house at night for some reason. Yes. And then Seth goes to get his stuff. And when Sandy comes into Seth's room and Seth's pretending to be asleep, Mm -hmm. he says, are you asleep? As if it's really early. Right. And then Marissa is going to Summer's birthday party. So I mean, it's 930, like 10. Nine. It's probably like nine o'clock. Here's what We're going to say 930. Ryan, dude. 
Wait till like two to sneak out of the house. What are you doing, buddy? That's he just has to mistake. go, Scott. It's a rookie mistake, when you gotta Ryan. go, you gotta go. It's like the bathroom and running away. The it's, same thing. If you gotta go, you gotta go. It's like nine o'clock. Like Sandy's just on a run and sees Ryan sneaking out of the house. It's like, hey, buddy, where are you going? It's ridiculous, is what I'm saying. Okay, it's so ridiculous. The good thing though, Scott. Seth comes down on the skateboard, and that's obviously not going to get him to the model home. But Marissa, Scott, Marissa has a car, and Marissa likes Ryan. I don't enough. know why you're being so dramatic about these undramatic parts. Yeah, this episode is so dramatic. And Marissa like, drives them in the car. <gasps> Can you believe it? She gets them in the car, and she is the one that's taking the places now on this car ride, Scott. It's very interesting <laughs> what happens in this car ride. So. Many times. <laughs> so so Marissa's driving and Marissa and Ryan are, are talking and you have Seth, the third wheel in the back. And there's these songs that are playing, Scott, and these these 2000 songs by this wonderful band called Rooney, who we will meet again later in the show. Really meet again later in the show. Sorry about that. Anyways, <laughs> um, there's a whole conversation, you know, Marissa, she's she's talking about the song and, and she's like, oh, you like them? Oh, I thought I was going to be Marissa. I thought we were carrying on. Oh, yes. You, you, you be Marissa. You play okay. her so much better than I do. Oh, you like them? Yeah, I guess. Well, what do you like? Everything. This is the most boring conversation in the world. I mean, Ryan's pretty dull. Yeah. I mean, as smart as they try and make Ryan, he has like no conversation skills with people. And I'm not saying they won't have better conversations in the episode. Mm. They do. No, they do. There's real chemistry between these two characters later in the episode. But this conversation here. I'm sorry. Did you write down that conversation? Yeah. <laughs> with him in the tent. Huh? With the tent thing. Well, yeah, that's some stuff. Oh, that was going to be a good one to reenact again, too. That's talking about. Okay. But, yeah. Anyways, so, yeah. And then the whole music conversation goes on. And that's the one with Ryan and Marissa. But then it it gets better. It gets better because then Seth is like, what do you mean you like this music? You can't like this music. You don't even know what this music is. And Marissa says, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I love punk right now. And then Seth goes, Avril Lavigne's not punk. (laughs) second Avril Lavigne reference in two episodes and then she's like well what about and I don't remember what band she, the sex, sex pistols, pistols the clash what about the she, sex pistols she lists the some of the most like well-known like like classic punk song punk and bands then ever um classic Seth I listen to the same music as Marissa Cooper I think I have to kill myself and I mean like the, the best part of this episode for me is the Marissa Seth bouncing off each other because i think they play off each other very well they're very hostile to they each do. other but in like a jokey kind of way yes. but i mean like this is what I, I this is what i didn't see in the pilot and i'm glad we're seeing now is like this is ob- this core the three of them together is obviously the core of what they imagined the show was going yeah. to be and we didn't get to see it in the pilot it really the three of them really never interacted in a unit and now they are and i think that's so fun because seth is great and I think it's really good, too, because as much as this conversation was for uh, the whole like Marissa, Ryan, Seth as a whole, it was really also for just Seth. And as we you know learn later, it was the whole you never talked to me, Marissa. But Marissa said that, oh, yeah, you're the one who never talked to yeah, me. You just jumped right ahead. You just jumped right ahead. Oh, yeah. Well, sorry. I skip over things all the time. But yeah. No. But then. But, you know, like going back to this conversation, it's there are so many things that are the same about them that if they really did take the time yeah. to talk to each other, they probably would have found out that Seth would have gotten along with everybody. Yeah. Well, and Seth is kind of a jerk in this episode. Yeah. Because, yeah, he's like he's like really angry. He's angry at Marissa. He's like he's like, you, I've lived next to you your entire life and you've never said two words to me. And she's like, you never talked to me. You thought you were better than all of yeah. us. And he doesn't say no to that. And I think that I yeah, I like their relationship a lot. I, yes. I mean, Seth is great. I love how Seth Seth is also not a nerd. Like that's the thing. Like Seth is a nerd in the show. Like Peter Parker was a nerd in the Amazing Spider-Man movies, where he was actually just ridiculously cool. And there's no reason why people wouldn't really like him. Like when they get to the model home, there's a skate ramp in the the drained out pool, and he's like in the background doing cool skate tricks on the skate and i'm like there's no way Scott, this is newport people don't like that type yeah of thing. i mean i guess i guess that's what you could argue that the rich the rich socialites don't care for punk skater punk culture but i don't unless I mean, you're marissa then you like punk there's definitely gonna be 
there's definitely going to be kids that like that. Any. This is yes. besides the point. Seth is a really cool dude. He is. And so, sorry, in that whole conversation that I skipped over to the point with Seth and Marissa having that, we did also um, jump over the fact that Marissa and Ryan also bonded again. Yeah. About, over their family. About their daddies. Yes. They both have daddy issues. Um, they boo. Because, they boo. They, they boo. do both have daddy issues. Uh, Ryan's father is in prison. Yes. Uh, Marissa's father will be in prison. Is that another Scott's prediction? I don't know. Okay. It's, it's, they're called Scott's speculations. It's like you don't even oh, Scott's speculations. To my um, I yeah. heard the jingle. I know what it is. Basically, Marissa says what we already kind of knew that there are some there's some police men's coming to the door, um, and and she knows something's wrong with her dad, but her dad won't say anything. So we're just kind yeah. of inching forward the Jimmy Cooper plot a little bit here. Yes. Um, speaking of the Jimmy Cooper plot, we move over to ah, that now. Ah, right? yes. We move over to the fact that the Jimmy needs some money. Jimmy needs some money. And you know what? Whenever Jimmy needs some help, Jimmy doesn't go to his family. Jimmy doesn't go to anyone You're who is. Jump 20 minutes. I thought ahead that's where you were going. No. Oh, Jimmy tries to tell Julie. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's the part. Jimmy tries to tell Julie about the money problems. He tries. Yeah. He tries to go to his wife, but Julie will have none of that because the horse has alopecia and, and it needs a check. And the, the horse needs money because alopecia is a serious problem. And is I it? know that because I've had alopecia before. Did horses get alopecia? I mean, horses can get alopecia. And then, yes, they lose all of their hair well, or lose it in spots. But if you have treatment, it can be cured. I can attest to that. You see my luscious locks Elise, of hair. Elise has hair on her head. Yes, I have but hair. I can't confirm. I'm looking at it right now. So hair if Jimmy can just head. give the money to Julie, just give her a the check. hair can come back on the horse. Yeah. But, you know. So, I mean, the important part of this is he can't tell her, right? He tries to tell her and she basically says, I don't want to hear about if your work anything stuff. About, yes, I don't want to hear about it. Uh, so that's that. Yeah. So then the next day, Seth and Marissa, they are talking to each other and they come with a plan and they're like, yeah, going to go back to the model home together in order to give Ryan supplies. Yeah. So Scott, what are the supplies that they bring? What are these things that are the Um, essential essentials that they gather around their house? A loofah. Ah, yes. Everybody scrub a dub dub. Uh, Some facial cleanser. Ah, yes. Everyone needs to have those pores clean. A roll of toilet paper, which is important. Taking care of business. Yeah. Yep. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it. A tent. There is a tent. A tent and a sleeping there bag. There is a some putt putt. Uh, a lot of candles, which uh, uh, will pay off later. Yes. Um, and of course, the most important item. The putt putt. Uh, the model home mix. Ah, uh, yes. The model home mix CD for your education. Here's. Says Marissa so, to Ryan. Um, so Marissa. So let's let's timeline. Again. What are we going to talk about? Timeline. Scott? What are we talking about this timeline? So. Marissa, remember, it was like 9.30 at night, right? Oh, yes, 9.30. 930. So Marissa uh, goes and hangs out with Ryan for an hour. Ryan and Seth gets him situated in the model home, gets food, hangs out with them in in the the shallow pool. Okay. Um, Then she leaves to go to her friend Summer's birthday party. Okay. Then, presumably, she goes home. Then she stays up till 3, 4 in the morning, uh, not only creating a mix a cd mix of music for ryan but burning that onto a cd uh, creating cover art for the jewel case and printing it off and putting it into the jewel case and getting it ready for him now scott so i'm guessing she stayed up till like 5 a.m just to get this thing ready for for ryan which you know i told you there's no way she stayed up till 5 a.m because if she went out to a party afterwards we all know what happens to the parties with marissa and she gets blackout she does get blackout so you know i'm going to throw into the mix that maybe maybe scott this was not personalized just for ryan and she could have made the mix for somebody else i don't believe that i don't believe you it know? i don't believe it Mar- marissa okay. cooper loves mr ryan does and she she made him a mix she only knows him it is for the, a it is matter the, of days and you're saying she loves him it is the model is this love at first sight mix it is the model home mix it is not the this is for luke and also for ryan if i feel like it or this is for my friends it is the model home mix okay 
the model home mix. Yeah. So anyway, she built or they all bring things in order to help Ryan be able to make it living on his own in a model home. But they forget something, Scott. <laughs> they forget the most important thing. Everyone knows that if you're going to go and you're going to run away from home, there's something that people cannot avoid. They took care of one of them. They brought the toilet paper, but they forgot the other. In order for the toilet paper to need to have a purpose. Oh my God, just say they forgot the food. They like, forgot the food. building this up so much. I know, Scott. That's what I'm good at. They forgot the food. You just like spent 30 seconds to say they forgot the Scott, food. Scott, let me have my moments. <laughs> Let people wonder, what do they need in order to use toilet paper? I don't know. Well, hopefully what they've is already it? seen the episode. They have to eat. You yeah. have to digest the food so you can get rid of it. So they go out to the boardwalk and for And then some use the food. toilet paper. Here's like... So I just spelled it out for them all. Kirsten... <laughs> Kiki. Kirsten has called the police. So the police are looking for Ryan, who is yes. missing at this point. Yes. And they all decide to go out to the boardwalk for some food and just and just do a fun boardwalk montage where they're riding around on ryan's bicycle yeah they're, they're stupid kids they're dumb but, they're they're kids but but you know who's not dumb mm -hmm. the crew the crew's not dumb scott you like switched to new things without letting me finish the things so i, was I thought you were done it was fun times at the boardwalk exclamation point no marissa oh. is all over ryan she's riding on his back on the bike <laughs> She's like, riding she's on him for all sure. All over him. She is. Like, she covers is, up his eyes. Yeah, it's not safe. That is not safe. She could have died. She could. But that is something that we learn about Marissa. She's a a risky person. She likes to live on the edge. She does. Remember when Push Ryan her asks limits. her if uh, she drinks like that often, and she doesn't answer the question. She because doesn't. The she just laughs. Is yes. She does. Yeah. Yeah, so there is a crew member. <laughs> this, I mean, this is the funny thing about watching Sorry, the I'm show. I'm skipping around on this these is the things thing about for you. Watching the show as closely as we did is that um, you see stuff. Like, for example, there's this whole big montage where they're riding back and forth on the boardwalk and having fun. And then they ride by some guy and he's in shorts and a polo and he's got a headset on. <laughs> and he's, I think he's got like a, a clipboard. A clipboard. Yeah. And I'm like, that's a crew guy. <laughs> It's definitely a crew guy. So Scott what's, rewinds what's it. What's he doing there? Pauses it. There he is. It's definitely. There's another crew guy. So oops. It is. Oops. Yeah. But they eventually, Scott, end up at the restaurant. And they're eating food together. Mm -hmm. And they're all talking. They're and then we have another moment, Scott, where we realize that Seth and Marissa are more alike than they thought. Yeah, because they're trying to plan what Ryan's going to do next. And Seth says, you know, this could be stop one on our, uh, our national pancake tour. And um, Marissa says, oh, like on the road, that's my favorite book. And Seth says, me too. <laughs> Drinks out of his grandpa mug. And yeah. That's one thing that I absolutely love about Seth is that he's like a grandpa. Yeah. And I love grandpa. So they both like Kerouac, which is like yeah. the most um, like stereotypical like teen love book ever. Like to love on the road by. Have you ever read it? Yeah, I haven't. Um, here's the thing about that though, like it's not pancakes. Like I don't know why. I love waffles. Yeah, waffles but, are better than pancakes. But the, the book is about a man named Saul who is who is Kerouac, um, and he doesn't eat pancakes on his travel. He eats apple pie. Oh, that's better than pancakes. So I don't I don't know why they're like doing the pancake thing. Well, they were eating breakfast. Well, yeah, but like, <laughs> who eats apple pie for breakfast, Scott? No, but it's not. The, he brings up pancakes twice. He brings it up earlier in the episode, too, and then brings it up again here. And when he says we can, the pancake tour, uh, Cooper is immediately like, oh, like on the road. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, it's not it's not the same. So that's my little quibble. Big question, though, Scott. What's up? Pancakes versus waffles. I'm in the waffles boat. I like waffles more. Are you with me in yeah. the boat? They got the because it's got it's got the indentions. they have the places for yeah. the syrup and you know how much i love my syrup you are obsessed with syrup it's unless way too much it is just permeating through the entirety of the waffle there's not enough syrup we go through like half a bottle of syrup per elise waffle that's not true and i'm the only one that uses syrup so you can't closely monitor the amount of syrup that i use that's true i don't really put syrup on my waffles you don't and that's weird it's, they're delicious i love them mm -hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> so anyways, while they're eating, oh my gosh, Scott, something big happens. Just stop burying the Scott, leaves. Just say it. Luke shows up because he eats food too. How They didn't plan for that. Scott, 
They didn't plan for that. Luke eats food. And they're all there together. Uh, so Marissa decides she's going to take care of it. There's a fight. So there's a fight. Uh, they almost get out of there. And they then, do. And then Cohen says under his breath, at least I don't shave my chest, which is like a really, I mean, that's a very 2000s insult. It's like. Yeah, it's like a it's yeah. Lots of, of people do it now. It's kind of like insulting, like, like it's it's not it's not great. It shows the show's age a little bit. Yeah, everybody shaves lots of body parts yeah. nowadays. But it's I mean, like the no hair. The who implication cares? Implication is like, oh, you're not a man because you shave your chest, right? Like that's the implication. Which right? let's be real, Seth probably doesn't have any chest hair. Anyways. Yes, I mean Seth doesn't need to shave his chest <laughs> because he has no chest hair. <laughs> Um, Poor Grandpa Seth. But anyway, that's what causes uh, the fight. And then Ryan gives the greatest line of the episode. Better than Welcome to the OC. Yeah, this is his comeback. Okay, Scott, are you going to say it or am I? You can say it. I mean, I'm Ryan here. Sure. You know what I like about rich people? Nothing. (laughs) He he decks him again. I punched my hand. I don't know if you guys picked up on that sound, but that's what it was. And if it didn't. I can punch Scott and make it louder if everybody wants Don't that. Don't do that. So then they run and they escape from, they do. from the bullies. They escape. But Scott, do we pick up on who Jimmy calls when he needs some help, Scott? Yeah, so tell so, me what happens. So uh, Jimmy had called Kirsten to say, asked if they could meet for lunch. And for some reason, they decided to meet for lunch at her abandoned model home. Or they ate lunch and then they went to the model home afterwards. So they ate, So he met her. Okay, whatever. He needed to... This is one of those... Don't worry about it. They ended up at the model home. Yeah, this is one of those TV things where people just, like, don't talk about things they need to talk about until a a pre-assigned time, weirdly. At a Um, place that we need them to be. Yeah, Um, a place where there is a set built. Um, So, yeah, they they show up at the model home, and then uh, Jimmy tells her, tells Kirsten... Tells Kiki. Stop calling her that. It's terrible. I hate that. That's what they call her in the show. I hate it. Kiki. Um, he asks to borrow $100,000 from her. Scott, if I need to borrow hundred k, would you lend it to me? No, I don't have $100,000. I could not lend that to you. Could we find someone who could lend it to me? Uh, I don't know. It will not charge me interest. No. That's a bummer. Um, I doubt. I doubt anyone we know has that kind of like, cash like just cash, lying like, around. Is that liquid in their finances? Um, but she's just like, yeah, sure, sure, whatever, whatever. Let me just call the bank. And of course, the kids all see this. So now, uh, Kirsten knows even more what's going on with her oh, yes. daddy's problem. And they did uh, say Kirsten, that Cooper. the house that she's building, that's the model home, looks like the house that Jimmy's parents had whenever they were younger, and that's where Jimmy had his first kiss as well as Kirsten. That's a really weird moment because they don't Is draw. It? Yeah, because the way they, I mean, like he said, I had my first kiss here. And she says, me too. But then they like, neither character reacts to that statement happening. That's because they had cut it and the kids were doing like the cameras on the kids. Yeah. And you but heard then, her say it without that. Right. Then, but yeah. then it cuts back and like neither of them are like smirking at each other because obviously it's it's each other right like it's, it's the most obvious implication no it's world. not they just had to spin the bottle party oh i see i see of course it was weird duh it was, weird. It was a weird moment oh. yeah it's it's kind of weird yeah but the big news then is that kirsten is getting new contractors at the model home tomorrow <gasps> so that ryan no! has to leave what's gonna happen to ryan he's gonna go to austin texas that's where all good people are. Yeah, because a man her mom dated once. His mom dated once. Yeah, his yeah. mom dated once said, if you're ever in the Austin area, look me up and I can give you some work. And so he's going to travel to from the Austin California area. to Austin, which is, let me tell you, it's real far. It's a yeah. real far. We flew on a plane mm-hmm. and it was a long time. Yeah. So on a bus, unimaginable. It's a long journey. Long journey. Yeah. So cut to Marissa, Scott. Cutting to Marissa, who is at a party with her friends, because that's what she does. Uh Uh-huh. And Summer and Marissa's boyfriend and his crew are all... They're just ragging on Ryan. Yeah. They're all just being really mean about him. And Marissa's had enough, because Marissa likes him. Uh And so she leaves, Scott. She says, you guys don't even know him. And she leaves. Um, 
You're so good at your Marissa thank impressions, you, Scott. You. It's just uh, incredible. Here's the thing I want to talk about in this scene, though. Yes, please do. Summer is just kind of the worst again. Like, first of all, like, they're talking about Ryan, and she doesn't know who they're talking about, so she goes, who dat? And I was like, ugh, don't talk like that. You can't pull that off. And then she's like, maybe he's on Oxy. I hear Oxy makes you crazy. And she's just like... She's the most stereotypical, stuck up, terrible person. I mean, you heard it, Scott, in the commentary. What episode did they say she turns around? Six. I thought it was four. I don't know. I thought it was six. It's the Tijuana episode. Yeah, whenever the Tijuana episode. Whenever they go to TJ. Um, so, yeah, she's, the, she's awful. She's awful. And so I think even at this point, the show is still kind of just using her as the stuck up like friend that Marissa is trying to push away from that life and go into this different, this different life. Yeah. Um, God, she's the worst. So she, she goes to Scott. She goes to Ryan. He's at the model home. He's lighting every candle that he has with real flames, mm-hmm. which sounds and safe. And a, he's and a, listening. Let's yeah. say the model home is under construction. Yeah. There is oil, plastic, there is paint everywhere. There's, there's, there's tarp, Nothing flammable. Yeah, he, Nothing at all. No. Mm-mm. It's all very paint safe. Thinner. There's paint thinner there, too. Yeah. It's great. It's real yeah. great. I heard there was a secret door. That's the, the song he's listening to. Uh, presumably on the mix, right? Yeah. Because it's, 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 yeah. it's diegetic music. And she says, this song reminds me of you. Yeah. What do you think it is about Hallelujah that reminds her of Ryan? I mean... Samson and Delilah. It's <laughs> all I got, Scott. That's all I got. But you don't really care for music, do you? Ah, I get uh, it. Ah, ha, there we go. Ha, ha, ha. But you know what, Scott? He he can't have Marissa stay with him at night because that's what Marissa wants. She's like, but I can't, I can't let you leave without just staying the night. Is that okay? And he says, like, no. If you stay the night, then I won't leave. So here's here's my surprise. Yes. I expected the Marissa Ryan thing to be a much more slow burn. Will they, won't they? But of course. They oh, no, won't. she wants they. Yeah. But it's like it's like right. We're episode two and they're already like declaring their love for each other. Um, but Ryan can't have it. He can't. He can't. Have and it. so what, he won't give it to what her. What does he say? We're from different worlds. That's not true. I'm not like you. Go. Please go. <laughs> and she runs off. It's no. so it's so dramatic. Turns up the music in the background. Hallelujah. We're from different Hallelujah. Worlds. I could never I could never be with Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Go. Please go. Hallelujah. And then he comes running after her for some reason, even though he sent her away. Yeah. Like, like well, a puppy. You know why? Because if he didn't run out, the camera wouldn't be able to show that Scott, Luke what? is there. Luke is there. Luke followed Marissa. Luke is there. Now Luke knows that Marissa's been hanging out with Ryan. With Ryan. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. So Ryan and, and his you know group of merry men, not Ryan, Luke and his group of merry yes. men, they decide that's not going to fly with them. Mm-hmm. So they go inside of that model home where all those candles are. <laughs> and, they, and they start beating the shit out of Ryan. And they do. And immediately they knock over a candle. Like the first punch, they knock over a candle. It lights up. A, a, well, a Scott, have fire. you ever tried to beat people up in a room full of candles? Do you know how hard it is to not knock over a candle? You know what, Elise? I what? Can't, I, I can't say that I have. Exactly. I Fist fighting in a room full of candles is not an experience I've ever had. I don't necessarily want to try it because I'm not, you know, like excited about getting burned. I've already been burned twice this year and I've gotten scars from both of them. Yeah, it's not cool. Yeah, so they're fighting. uh, They're knocking over giant cans of paint thinner, which explode. And the whole house is on fire. And Luke and all his buddies are like, let's get out of here, man. We got to get out of here. But but Ryan's unconscious because they beat him up so bad. Yeah. So they all start running out. And then Luke turns around (gasps) and he sees Ryan on the floor. And he goes. And he thinks, I don't want to be a murderer. (laughs) I have to go get this kid. So he goes and he gets Ryan and he pulls him out of the model home. And he saves him. Not a murderer anymore. Good job. You met the bare minimum of not a murderer. I am proud of you, on Luke. On the morality scale. Yeah. Um, man, Ryan, 
sure does get punched in the face a lot, though. He does. Can we... I think we should start uh, Ryan getting punched in the face counter on the oh, show. Oh, okay. Uh, so starting now, we have the Ryan getting punched in the face counter, and our number is at two. Ryan got punched in the face, uh, and he got told, welcome to the OC, very rudely, by Luke. And now here, he is punched right in the face again by Luke. Okay, I do you have a, a very important question about this. Are we counting per punch or per fight? What do you mean? You know, if you're getting beat in a fight, there's going to be more than one oh, yeah, punch that gets to your face. I'm not going to count per punch. No, per fight. Okay. If he gets smacked in the face in Ryan's the middle of a fight, fight that's count. One. No, it's not just a fight count. Though. Oh, so if in the fight he gets hit in the face. Yeah, because like the fight in the the restaurant where he said, "You know what I like about poor people?" Ryan didn't get rich punched in the people. rich people. Yeah, sorry. Scott get um, it right. Ryan didn't get punched in the face, so that does not add into the Ryan gets punched in the face counter. But he got punched in the face multiple times. But he did in punch somebody fight. in the face. Right. Do, we can't. There's so too we're going to have a that's, Ryan gets punched in the face and then a Ryan punches people in the face. No, that's too much. So, Ryan, just, so just the receiving yeah. of the punches. If, if, if the makeup people need to put makeup on Ryan's face to make it look like he got punched in the face, that counts as a Ryan getting so punched in the face. So what if he accidentally got punched in real life outside of the show and they had to put makeup on his face? They would cover the punch. But does that count as getting punched in the face? No. Why would that count? Because they put makeup on it. He's wearing makeup in every scene. It's a television That's a good show. point, Scott. So we're going to count how many times Ryan wears makeup. If the makeup crew puts a bruise on his face like he got punched in the face. So the makeup people have to hit him in the face. Oh, my God. We're moving on. <laughs> What's next, Scott? Um, <laughs> we now cut to a very happy Jimmy watching basketball. He's happy uh, because yes. he just got a hundred thousand dollars from his old girlfriend, Kirsten. Uh, he's watching, this is the weirdest freaking part in the show for me. He's watching, uh, ESPN classics game. So he's watching the NBA finals. Okay. The Lakers versus the Pistons. Don't know that um, game, but I saw him watching it multiple times. Yeah. So here's the weird part about it though. Yeah. I never saw this until you. His mouth m- says the game was in 1988. Mm-hmm. That's what his lips Which moved. would make sense for Marissa's age in the show. His voice yes. says 1986. And it's Be- clearly ADR. Because they had the wrong yeah. date. No, but they didn't. That's the thing that I don't understand. The Pistons Lakers finals uh-huh. took place in 1988. The, oh. the way he moved his mouth was the correct year, but they ADR'd 86 in there. Well, and why I, would they do that? I don't. No, I do not understand. Did you look it. it up? I couldn't find it. I tried to look for it. I don't understand why they did this. What good are you? For those that don't know, ADR is automated dialogue replacement. It's basically anytime they need to uh, voice over they for need a to, correction. Yeah, they need to correct dialogue or Got like it. like if, if the recording didn't pick it up, they just basically you stand in a studio in front of a microphone, they play the scene over and you say the line again and then they just stick it in. Uh, they clearly did this not very well. If you go back and watch the episode, it's super obvious. It um, is. But you wouldn't catch it unless you had Scott telling you. So yeah. I'm really but I, I just don't understand in. why they did it because it's definitely 1988 and the age of the kids lines up for 1988. It does. Because if true. it's supposed to be 2003 and uh, Julie was pregnant with Marissa while she was watching the game, it means Marissa was born in 1989, probably. Um, yeah, because Marissa's my age. Yeah, and she's supposed to be right your age and that's when you were born. Yeah. Whereas if, if the game was in 86, like they said in the show, that means Marissa was born in 87 and that means she's 18 years old and a sophomore in high school, which doesn't make any sense. I mean, sometimes you get held back. That's true. But I just don't, I just don't, what did they do? Why did they do it? The, I don't the know. mysteries of the show. Right. Anyway, uh, one thing the scene does for us, I think is kind of complicate the Julie-Jimmy relationship, right? Because we do see them happy together. Like she comes and watches the, the basketball game with him and they're reminiscing saying about when she was pregnant and i think they're putting in a little work to just show like why there these two was are together. something yeah there at one point in time long time ago there was something between these two people yeah um, and i liked that they put that in i liked i wanted to see that i wanted to see these two characters like why are they together why did they get together yeah. like he's clearly obviously in love with kirsten still um so but but why did he get with this person and now we, see we will find bit. out yeah. but in the meantime scott kirsten and sandy that whole house fire. Yeah, they get called about they their get, model home. They get notified. Fire. And so, you know, um, Kirsten, she feels pretty bad because the house is burning. And, yeah, she's pissed and you off. know, that was the 
a house that maybe maybe Ryan could have st- stayed in and, no. and she <laughs> didn't let him and that is not but now you know there's it's been two days and her son, he got drunk. What are, what are you doing? I skipped around. <laughs> you know, so Seth, it's always showing she's she feels guilty. You need Scott, to read these I didn't read your beforehand. notes beforehand. Um, so Seth confesses immediately, right? They show up at the, they see the model homes on fire. They're like, "What the hell happened? Somebody's been living here." And Seth immediately goes, "It was my fault." Seth again is not good at. It's just the relationship with his parents. You know, he never had yeah. to t- not tell them something that was true. Yeah. But here's like here's what it I think. wasn't true. Yeah. So the show has throughout this episode showed Kirsten feeling guilty about the way she's been treating Ryan, how she's not been giving him a chance, not letting them stay with them. But look at this. How long has Ryan been living with this family? Three days, maybe. I don't know. I think it's about three days. So in three days, he's gotten her son drunk. He's gotten in. I mean, three, he didn't get him drunk. He just took him to a party. He's gotten in three fights. And he burned down a house. Burning down the house. So I'm kind of with Kirsten at this point. Like from the outside, it seems like this kid brings nothing but trouble. <laughs> nothing but trouble. But he's smart. Is that it? Yeah. Is it? Because yep. Sandy, Sandy sees something in him. And he's got a really bad family life. Mm-hmm. Yep. So cut to Ryan. Not dead from smoke inhalation. No, he's fine. But still trying to hitchhike to Austin. Yeah, he's going to hitch from Newport and to Austin. And so a car finally pulls over and it happens to be Luke. Uh-oh. So not only did Luke go back and save Ryan from the burning house, now Luke has gone out in search of he Ryan. He felt so guilty and he went to find him. He did. So Ryan hops in Luke's car and he's like, you got to take me somewhere. Well, first Luke is like, if we, I'll, I won't tell you were there if you don't tell I'm there. If we keep, we'll keep this totally a secret, nobody ever has to know. Um, and then Ryan hops in and says, "You got to drive me somewhere." So I think what you're supposed to assume in here is that Ryan's getting the hell out of town, right? He's gonna have Luke take him to the bus station or to somewhere else, and he's just gonna disappear. But is that what happens, Elise? It's not. Where does he go? Every time I've seen this episode, Scott, he always goes to the same place. <laughs> He always goes back to Kirsten and Sandy's home. Never changes. Well, he Never the, ends up going he goes to Austin. To the model home. No, he goes to their house where the cops are. It's Why not are the model there? home. Oh yeah, you're right because they want to talk to Seth again. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Every time I've watched it, it's the same place, Scott. <laughs> but he takes responsibility. He does. He says, "Yes, I was there. Yes, it was me." He and he does. gets arrested. And Luke gets out of the car too. It it throws Marissa for a loop. Yeah. She's like Luke. With Ryan. Mm-hmm. And then when they take Ryan away for the questioning and they ask him something about like what happens, Luke's like, no, that's not what happened. And they said, we were there too. And he, he comes clean. He says, yeah. yeah, he was. He definitely could have been a total jerk yeah. and gotten away with keeping his mouth shut. And it surprises Marissa again. Yeah. Which is, I mean, I, I like that because in the pilot, Luke was just a complete asshole. Like, un like, unrepentant he was cheating on here and i'm not saying he's not an asshole he is absolutely and marissa knows too because i think i skipped over the whole conversation in the beginning when ryan said he wasn't very popular because he hit luke and she's like oh it's hard to believe you're not more popular yeah you know so she knows that he's not a nice person yeah yeah but ryan hit him first he did yeah um but I like that they're complicating Luke a little bit. He's a complex character. He's not just the unrepentant asshole. Um, we can put on his list of good qualities. Doesn't want to be a murderer. Takes responsibility for burning houses. Down. It's true. Of course, um, Luke is also rich. So his attorney will probably get him get off, him off clean. right away. Yeah. Where Ryan is probably being the, the poor going to have. It's a good thing he's got Sandy. It is a good thing he has his attorney right there who says, I'm his attorney. Do not yep. question him without me there. And then that's when the episode End ends. scene. That's yeah. So next week, ends. Scott, we have another one. But before that, we're going to hit a, another little segment that we like to call That's So 2000. That's So 2000. So every week, Scott, we watch. I was trying to come up with a jingle for this segment, like by coming up with some like vintage 2000s noises. And I couldn't come up with any. Like, is the AOL Instant Messenger ding a 2000s noise? I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have uh, three things, three Scott. Things. Three right. things. What are they? What are they? Um, the first one is the 
part of the women's wardrobe, Scott, they were wearing what we would call silk bandana tops. Both Kirsten and Marissa had one of these on. It was a halter top and the fabric was almost bandana like, but it was a silk thing and it went down in the front yeah. to a little mm-hmm. point and then it tied in the back. It was very trendy in the early 2000s. Okay. So that was the first one, uh, bandana silk tops. The second one, you know, whenever Luke and Ryan, they met back up in that little restaurant and Ryan had his hood on, Luke takes it down and he goes, you're a little far from eight miles. Ooh, an M&M yeah, reference. Yeah, an M&M reference. And the last one, Scott, the last one is the burnt mix CD. I don't know if in the early 2000s you were really into this, but we always burned mix CDs, yeah. Scott. And so the fact that there was a mix CD, not mix tape anymore, but we've trans... Um, but I think you could we, st- call it a mix. I forget, whatever. But we went to the mix CD. Mm-hmm. So those are my three things, Scott. Yeah. Silk bandana tops. You're a little far from eight mile and the entrance of the mix CD. I am going to What go is the most 2000s? The most 2000s thing, early 2000s thing, I'm going to go with the mix CD because I made so many of those. Ah, uh, yes, I did too. I was uh, talking to a girl my sophomore year mm. or maybe my junior year of college. Um, and she burned a bunch of music for me. Mm. And I remember seeing the scene in here and I was like, oh, she likes me. Yeah. <laughs> she burned a bunch of discs for me. Natalie. Natalie was really key to my musical education. Mm-hmm. She really helped me. That's she good. She burned a bunch of music for me. So music yeah, is I'm, always very telling I'm about gonna vote, people too. I'm going to vote for that. Uh, do you agree with that or are you going to go different from me again? Um, I think that's a really good one. I'll, I'll agree with you. Okay. I mean, Eight Mile is pretty key, but yeah. yeah. I'll when give did you Eight Mile? When did that movie come out? I don't know when it came out. You keep but smacking your microphone. I keep smacking lots of things. Every time you smack your microphone, it makes a really annoying noise. Well, I can't hear it. It came out in two thousand two. <laughs> All the people listening to it can hear it. Well, I'm glad you guys can hear it, but I can't. So, haha, ha, it's just me. I don't care. Wow. Yep, came out in two thousand two. All right, Elise. Now, before we wrap up the episode, it's time to check in and do what we call relationship status. Status check. Okay, so first we got Luke and Coop. So Marissa, she totally loves Ryan, but just became a little bit more complicated with Luke. And, you know, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? So you know what? He was decent. The Luke and Coop relationship, its heartbeat is there. What are you going to give it? Out of a one to ten, you know, I think in this episode you have to give it at least a six and a half. A six and a half. What yep. was it last week? Do you remember? I think it was maybe a five. Four. I think it. So Ryan, Luke, and Coop going up. They are going up. So Scott, who's next on Coop. our status check? Coop and Ryan. Ah, uh, yes, Coop and Ryan. So Ryan rejected Marissa. Rejected her like a puppy. He did. He, he did. Said, he said, "Go, get out of here. I don't even want you anymore." Mm. Uh, so that's gonna sting. That's gonna. It I think is. That's gonna, it's gonna affect their, their, rela- relationship. their relationship. Was progressing very quickly. Ah, yes. And now I just think it took a step back. So you know what I'm gonna give him? Nose dive. What? A five. Oh, a five. That's right a- below Luke and Coop. Okay, so then we moved to Seth and Summer. Seth and Summer really didn't have any much of a dynamic at all of this episode. No. I don't think they had any scenes together. Summer still has no idea who Seth is, and he's still being creepy because he knows her birthday is also being defined by just how shallow it. And terrible of a person she is. We're going to give the Seth and Summer relationship a solid three, oh, three points of a one to that's ten. Not good. Next, we have Sandy and Kirsten on the status check. Yeah, not a lot of conflict between these two characters this week, at least. Um, I'd say they're doing okay, but. Uh, okay. But. Yes. The but. seeds of conflict have been planted. Ooh. Marissa, or uh, Kirsten takes a hundred thousand dollars without telling she her husband does. Um, she does it's a pretty she, substantial she amount of money built a model home that modeled after her first boyfriend's mm-hmm. house uh, a lot of a lot of conflict a lot of conflict things here. that could happen so, but but for for the moment yes they're doing pretty good they're doing okay i'm gonna give them an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten there that's a pretty go. solid number mm-hmm. there we're gonna move mm-hmm. next to our final couple of our status check for this week and that is jimmy and julie cooper you know jimmy and julie cooper they're very rocky in the first episode but this episode Episode, Scott, we do learn a little bit more about them, and we learn that at one point, Scott, at one point, they were happy in their relationship together. So, therefore, we have to see that there could be some potential, maybe rekindling in the future, maybe not. We, we don't, don't know. know if that one point is in 1988 or 1986. Regardless, but it-, it happened, Scott. It happened at one point in time. So, we're going to give them a solid five, Scott. Whoa. The Jimmy and Julie Cooper, they have a five. They went up the most of the week then. They were they at did. a zero and they're up to a five now. Because we knew that they loved each other enough to have a child. <laughs> yes, because that's what requires to make a child love. Some might say. 
<laughs> no. Some might not say. All okay. Right. That is the end of relationship status. We will check back next week and see how we're doing after episode three. Uh, but before we wrap this thing up, we need to look Scott at some speculations. Furniture. Yeah. So not. OK, I got two. I got two. Two. Number one. OK. Um, because Ryan took responsibility for what he did. He took okay. responsibility for the fight. He took responsibility for the fire. He comes back to the house and puts himself into the hands of the law. I think this combined with Kirsten's incredible guilt over the course of this episode, uh, she's going to decide to let Ryan stay. And thusly, our status quo will be achieved. The uh, status quo being Ryan is now not just temporarily living there, but permanently living there. I'm sure she'll say something like until we can find his mother, he can stay here. Okay, Scott. So life lessons that mm-hmm. we've learned from the OC. Yeah. If <sighs> you steal a car yeah. and burn down a house, a rich family will let you stay with yeah. them. As long as you tell them you did it. You okay. can't, you got to say, yes, I did those things. Okay. And then they will let you it's good to know. stay there. We uh, just have to keep track of these things. You hear that kids? <laughs> uh, number two, number two. Okay. Second prediction. What is it, Scott? So uh, a video game came out today called world of warcraft classic uh, it is um the original version of world of warcraft which came out in 2004 the game first came out and so they re-released the game as it was in 2004 for people to re-experience it's basically n- nostalgia the game and they're going to make a lot of money off of it okay. but in honor of that game coming out today my formal prediction is that it's not going to be this season because it's not till next year the game comes out but at some point in the oc seth cohen will mention the game World of Warcraft. Okay. And so there there we go. There's my second prediction. Okay. It's going to be a while before we know the answer to that one, but I just want you to... And I will say, I can neither confirm nor deny that because I had no idea what the game was before you. <laughs> so I don't know about that we'll, prediction. We'll find out we'll together. We'll find out. Maybe next week, maybe in a few weeks it's on... It's not going to be next hmm. week because the game wasn't out yet. What it'll you be, say? It'll have to be in uh, 2004. Okay. It'll have to be in next season. Okay. All right, Scott, so we finished our main event of the OC, and now we're going to recap another favorite show, Scott. What show is that, Elise? BIP, Bachelor in Paradise. Yep, this is the part of the show where I let Elise talk about The Bachelor because that was the agreement I struck when I she agreed to do this show. Yes, so last week we had a huge thing happen on the show that had never happened before, and Demi, Demi's girlfriend from before the show, Christian, comes on the show. And decides to stay on the show. Now, normally, whenever they have a character, and I guess I do say character, who, you know, wants to date somebody outside of the show, they say, okay, yes, that's fine, wonderful, you can leave, and you can go and date her. But not this time, Scott. This time, Christian stays. And so we have Christian and Demi, and Demi has to break up with Derek. Cue last week's campaign for Derek to become The Bachelor, who nobody wants Derek to become The Bachelor. He's absolutely boring. I don't even know who that guy is, and I you can already tell you don't I don't want to know. Like he was him. already on another season of BIP. You'd know him if you saw him. But this week, Scott, you know what? The, the person that I really want to talk about, well, I guess there's two. There's JPJ. Love me some JPJ. And I think I've decided that JPJ... He's just intoxicated the whole time. Like, I think most people are, but the way that he's acting, there's no way you can act that way without being on that. Yeah, he might be on something. I don't know. I don't know how they get drugs out there, but they probably you're not supposed to. But I'm sure he's acquired something somewhere. Anyways, but I'm most frustrated and intrigued slash creeped out by Christina on this episode. And this last week's too. Is it the Russian you know, chick? Yes. Her obsession with Blake and with her, I just want the friendship rose because I want him to stick around did and have to watch. Did he give her the friendship rose? Yes, he did. Ugh. He gave her the friendship Ugh. rose again after the girl that actually liked him shared with him how much she liked him and he said yes 100 percent, you're gonna get my rose and then christina went and talked to him and then she just changed his mind and it reminds me of even though i've never seen the movie fatal attraction where it's like the creepy girl comes and she tries to convince you that she's normal and it's okay. She's just your friend. She wants to keep you around. And then she ends up boiling a bunny. Isn't that something that happens? Isn't there like a bunny in some pot? And then she like goes psycho and just tries and kills you in the shower or something like that. I don't know. But 
that's the type of vibe I'm getting from Christina right now. Really creepy. Cool. Like, <laughs> like the, is that creepy? You know, if it was between Seth and Christina, Seth would look like a saint. Christina would look like a real unstable person. It was weird. <laughs> it's like yeah. you trailed off and didn't realize what yeah. words you needed to say next. Well, that's a bummer, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I'll be interested to see what happens with that. Mm-hmm. Is that it? Is that all that happened? Yeah, that's all I'm going to recap. There was a crazy girl. It was uh, Christina. No. Oh, Tejan. Yeah. Yeah. Tejuan. Te Tejuan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's not, she's not well. She needs to leave the show. And she did. Hooray. I don't like the show. She's just really hot. She's it's really Mexico. hot. And it's the whole time. Not like attractive. Like just but warm. Like, like the temperature. She sweaty. Very sweaty. Yeah. yeah. And, and so she needs to go home and get some AC and not, uh, not like JPJ because he was not that into her. No, he's he into, was Haley into the twin and Tasha. Mm -hmm. But Tasha's into Derek. Ugh. But Derek was into Demi. It's tale as old as time. But Demi's into Christian. Tale as old uh, as time. Yep. Okay, Scott. So next week, <laughs> we will be moving on to season one, episode three The Gamble. Fun fact about the OC after the first episode, all of the episode titles start with the. Ah. So, like with the model home, which uh, turned out to be just a literal. A literal phrase. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder what the gamble is going to be. Uh, I think, think it's going to be a double meaning. Okay. Here's what I, here's what I predict. Some sort of bullshit uh, casino fundraiser event. Okay. Um, and also uh, Seth maybe trying to take a gamble on oh, Summer. Oh, maybe so. And that's what I predict for that. Okay, Scott. Well, that's all we have time for this week. So if you like this podcast, you can check out all the other podcast shows that we do over at doofmedia.com. Also, consider donating to our Patreon account. That's patreon.com slash doofmedia. You can donate a dollar a month or whatever else you can afford. And guys, we are 17 patrons away from reaching our next goal, which is a deep dive into the books of Stephen King, the Dark Tower series. I have been wanting to do this show for a long time. I set it as a ridiculously high goal that I thought we would never achieve. And guys, holy crap, we're almost there. If you are not a patron yet, please consider becoming a patron. It's a perfect time to do it to help make that show happen. And from what I understand, based on my conversations with Scott, this will be like almost the role reversal because when you're reading Worm and Ward, Matt was the person that had read the books before and then you were reading it for the first time. But this is going to be completely in reverse because Matt has never read the series, correct? correct. And Scott has. Matt has and only so it'll read be one Stephen King novel. role reversal of yeah. The Dark Tower. And I'm sure it'll be much better than the movie that came out. What was it last year? Well, it, can't, ago? it can't be worse. That's for yeah. damn sure. Yeah. All right, guys. Also, if you happen to be listening via Apple Podcasts, consider leaving us a rating and a review. You can do that on Stitcher, too. Stitcher has their own review oh, system. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, do that. Do Someone that. rated us last week. Thank you for giving us another five-star rating. Yeah. We appreciate those stars. Thank you. I don't know who you were because you were there a, was no review. You were a anonymous. I really appreciate you. Anonymous. 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 Well, thanks, guys. That was fun. I hope you enjoyed episode two of The Model Home. I did. It doesn't exist anymore. It got burned down. I wish you'd build me a home like that. How? What's the opposite of welcome to the OC, bitch? Should be like to sign out on. Is it like goodbye? Um, goodbye from the OC, uh, chap. Yep. 